Thank you. I'm Mr. Laner, and welcome back to Mr. Laner's Math Extravaganza. Today, we're going to focus on lesson investigation 1.3 and variables and patterns. And you might notice something a little bit different today. You might be like, hey, Mr. Laner, you look a little bit taller over there. Well, no, it's not a camera trick. I didn't magically grow three inches overnight. I'm wearing roller skates. This week it is roller skates at Hazel Green, so yes, I do look a little bit taller. Yes, I can move across the TV screen here uh, very easily. But let's not waste any more time. Let's take a look at a couple of example problems from Investigation 1.3. If you have your CMP3 book at home, this is going to be easier for you to see than to focus on the screen up here. We're going to take a look at problems 10 and 11 here. So let's not waste any more time. Let's take a look at this bad boy. Ooh, hopefully I don't go down. We'll see. In question 10, it says make a table and a graph of time, temperature, data that fit the following information about a day on the road. So think back to our bike tours. That's going to help you guys use that information from what we've talked about in there to help you answer this question. The first data point. We started riding at 8 a.m. The day was quite warm with dark clouds in the sky. Ooh, what do those dark clouds mean? About mid-morning, the temperature dropped quickly to 63 degrees, and there was a thunderstorm for about an hour. After the storm, the sky cleared and there was a warm breeze. As the day went on, the sun steadily warmed the air. When we reached our campground at 4 p.m., it was 89 degrees Fahrenheit. So, there's a lot of information in there, but it's data points. It's kind of like journal entries. Imagine, you know, a bike rider, maybe a roller skater, roller skater going through, roller skating all the way through, and they're just kind of journaling at 8 a.m., at 10 a.m., at noon, at 4 p.m. They're giving you some data points here. So we're going to take a look at this to create a table and a graph. Let's take a look at the hint. I know a lot of times you want to skip that. It doesn't look important over there, but yeah, we want to read that bad boy. Hint. There is no one right answer. Hmm. Imagine that. There's, only, uh, there's not only one way to do the problem like we've talked about all year long. Time and temperature may not be exact numbers in this problem. So you, you will need to use clues to make reasonable estimates. Hey, more math coming back. So. Think about, is it reasonable in our answer? Are, is what we're putting down you know, going to make sense? I'm not going to say it's 200 degrees outside and then negative 10. Obviously, that would be uh, very different, very crazy temperatures. So does it make sense? I'm going to start off with our table here on the side. So the day on the road, time is on the left-hand side here. Temperature is on the right-hand side. I know that at 8 a.m., they said the day was quite warm with dark clouds in the sky. Hmm. I'm going to say, you know what, quite warm. I'm going to say it's like 80 degrees. You might choose something different and that's fine too, but let's just say 80 degrees. It says the day was quite warm with dark clouds in the sky. It says about mid-morning or 10 a.m. The temperature dropped quickly to 63. Well, I know that it's going to be 63 degrees at mid-morning. I also know that, well, hmm, if it's at 9 a.m. and the morning started off with 80 degrees, maybe the temperature stayed the same for that first hour. Maybe it didn't change too much, 80 degrees. At mid-morning, it was 63 degrees because there was a thunderstorm for about an hour, so up to 11 o'clock. It says, after the storm, the sky cleared and there was a warm breeze. So maybe at 11 o'clock, it's still 63 degrees here because that storm is still going on. The temperature had just dropped. Then it says, as the day went on, the sun steadily warmed the air, and we reached our campground at 4 p.m. It was 89 degrees. So as I'm charting here, I'm knowing, I know that the temperature is going to steadily increase, and at 4 p.m., I'm going to end at 89 degrees. So I'm going to think of it 63 degrees, maybe at noon the next hour, maybe it goes to 67 degrees. Maybe by 1 p.m., maybe it jumps up again to like 75 degrees. Maybe at 2 p.m., it's 80 degrees. And maybe at 3 p.m., it's 85 degrees. Uh, again, these numbers are not exact. You may have different numbers, but this is a reasonable estimate uh, as I work through my table. Well, I did all the hard part now. Got my information down. I have my time. I have my uh, temperature here. Those are the two data points that we're looking at. Then I look at my graph here. Remember, the graph needs to have a title. The y-axis is labeled with temperature. I have my intervals of 10. On the bottom, I have my x-axis, which is in time, or h for hours, and I have 8 a.m. all the way through 4 p.m. Well, now comes the fun part. We're going to take a look at how to graph this information. So, at 8 a.m., 
I said that it was quite warm at 80 degrees. My dot right there on 80 degrees. At 9 a.m. I said, you know what, probably stayed about the same. So I went here. Now I don't have a ruler up here, um, but at home, actually, I kind of lied to you. I'm going to use this. At home, you want to make sure that you take a straight edge, if I can get it, straight edge to connect those dots. A little hard to do when you're sitting here on the rollerblades. Uh, but that was our first point. At 10 a.m., I said it was 63 degrees. So I'm going to go up there, 60. Uh, that looks about 63 degrees. I connect that data point there. At 11 a.m., I said it stayed about the same. So I'm going to do this right here, connect those dots. Okay, then at 12 noon, I said about 67 degrees. So I know that this temperature started to rise. It's not quite yet to 70, but it's close. Then at 1 p.m., 75 degrees, so halfway between there. Oop. Then at 1 p.m., I said, or I just did 1 p.m. What are you talking about, Mr. Lanier? 2 p.m., 80 degrees. So at 2 p.m., there's your 80 degrees. At 3 p.m., I said 85 degrees. It's going to be in between the 80 and 90. And then lastly, at 4 p.m., it's not quite 90, but it's just underneath it. And there's my table. Didn't really need it for that one, the eraser. So as I look at this information up here, uh, and I take a look, I took what I saw in the table, and then I looked at it in a graph format, and we can see the morning starts off, we can refer back up here, the morning starts off at nice, easy temperature at 80 degrees. The thunderstorm happens, the temperature drops. For about an hour, it rains. And then after that hour, the temperature steadily increases till 4 p.m. when we get to the campground, and it's 89 degrees. So this graph tells a story. Uh, even if I didn't have this information up here on the side, if I were to look at this graph, I'd be able to tell, like, well, something had to have happened here for the temperature to drop. Was it a storm? What was going on with the weather? And then I noticed at the end of the day, it steadily increased. So this goes back to analyzing the tables and the graphs to see what information uh, we can see. If I wanted to look at the table and find like the rate of change, how uh, for every hour, how did the temperature change? Well, the difference between 80 and 80, well, zero. There's no difference. But then the temperature drops 17 degrees. There's that storm. Stays the same. Then it increases four degrees. And I can go so forth and so on to figure out the rate of change per hour, how often it's changing uh, throughout the day. I can also figure out the average temperature for the day as well from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. So there's a lot of information that we can do with just this uh, short amount of uh, data that we have up here. Um, again, I referred back to my information up here in the top. I applied it to my table first and then to my graph. All right, I got one for you guys too as I roll on over to this other side. Okay. Let's get this one on the side over here. See if I can pause it. Ooh, I got a thumb in there again. And I'll erase my data. And if you have your books, go ahead and turn your book to page 11. We're going to take a look at this next one up here again, analyzing some student work. I know it's not the easiest to see on your computer screen right now, uh, but go ahead and open up to page 11. Uh, this is the one you're going to try at home. It says, Amanda made the graphs below to show how her level of hunger and her happiness changed over the course of the day. She forgot to label the graphs. You're going to use this information down here about her happiness and her hunger to figure out which graph is for happiness and which graph is for hunger. Go ahead and, I know you got your stuff ready to go, go ahead and pause that video and we'll see what you come up with. All right, in this problem, it says, I'm gonna look at the book because it's easier to read even for me. For her hunger, hmm, I woke up really hungry and ate a large breakfast. I was hungry again by lunch, which began at 11.45. After school, I had a snack before, base, or before basketball practice, but I had a big appetite by the time I got home from dinner. I was full after dinner and didn't eat much food before I went to bed. My happiness. Well, I woke up in a good mood, but got mad at my older brother for hogging the bathroom. I talked to the, to the guy I like on the morning bus. My classes were good, but got bored by lunch. At lunch, I had fun with my friends. I loved my computer class right after lunch, but the rest of my afternoon classes were boring. 
After school, I had an awesome basketball practice. After dinner, I still had to do homework and chores. Okay, so a lot of information in this one. <clears throat> As we look at these two graphs, one is her happiness and one is her hunger. If we look at both graphs, they both start off pretty good. Then one has a sharp decrease, another one has a sharp decrease, then one has a sharp increase, so she goes from really being really mad, maybe, or really happy, um, where she's at her high. Here it kind of gradually increases, then it spikes down, gradually increases, spikes up, then spikes down, then goes across. Same thing here in this one, it has a huge decline at 3 p.m., and then it's a steady incline, and then slowly decline. So as I analyze these graphs I just talked about in the last problem, they tell a story. Well now I have to match which one of these stories matches the graph. So let's take a look. I'm going to take a look at hunger. It says, hmm, I woke up hung really hungry uh, and had her breakfast. So let's just start with graph one. Let's say I start that. All right, she would wake up. Yeah, she's really hungry. It's high. And then she eats it would go down. If I look at graph two here, oh, she starts off pretty hungry and it goes down. So that would work. Let's look at happiness. When she woke up, she was in a good mood, uh, but then she got in a fight with her brother. Oh, I'm sure none of you at home ever get in fights with your siblings or argue over uh, breakfast or the bathroom in the mornings. That never happens, right? So that would work too. She might wake up in a good mood and it might drop. It might drop. So either graph could start off telling both stories. So then I look here. Um, it says, and she had her breakfast and she was hungry again by lunch, which was 11.45. So if I look here, here's about 11.45. Hmm, this kind of makes sense. She ate breakfast, so she's not really hungry anymore. But as the day goes on, kind of like us, sometimes you're like sitting in class, you're like, oh my goodness, I can't wait for lunch, I'm starving. You know, let's move on, let's get this time flying by. So that would make sense there in that graph. Let's take a look at the second one. Well, she just ate, and then, oh, she's really hungry again by 9 a.m.? That really wouldn't make sense. So I'm gonna take a look at graph one. I think this is gonna be the one for hunger. She's hungry by 11.45, so she's gonna eat again which means it goes down. Uh, it says, at 11, after that, uh, she kind of goes through again. Where was that, sorry. 11.45, so she eats, it kind of goes down a little bit. She gets a little bit hungry here. Um, and by nighttime, why is her hunger gonna be high again? Yeah, she's definitely gonna wanna eat some dinner. Now, just like you guys, I'm sure. You eat dinner, and then your hunger goes back down again. And then at the end of the night, you start to maybe get a little bit hungry before you go to bed, or you start to get hungry before you wake up in the morning for breakfast. Well, let's take a look at her happiness to make sure that this makes sense then. In her happiness, she starts off, gets in an argument with her brother. She gets to school. Man, maybe she's got some really cool classes like Mr. Lander's class. Yeah, I love that class. And then she kind of gets bored a little bit. Oh man, we have CMP3 math. I don't want to go to that class. But boom, at noon I got lunch. So now I'm back. I'm happy. I'm going to sit with my friends. Afternoon doesn't start off so bad. I got socialized with Mr. Lehner. Oh no, I'm, I'm an expert 21 reading. I don't want to do that. But hey, you know, we got C uh, we have PE coming up. So she gets happier, excited there um, in the afternoon. And then we know that at 6 p.m. she had basketball practice, which she really enjoyed. So she was happy with her basketball practice, which means she's feeling really happy here. The end of school, basketball, oh, this is great. And then she's still got to do chores at home. Maybe some of you guys have to do that. So she's not really upset, but she's not the happiest as she starts to kind of decline uh, before she gets ready for bed, hopefully for school the next day. So again, in this problem, analyze what the information tells you and apply it to the graphs. This graph on the bottom here would definitely be for her happiness, uh, and this graph up here would show her hunger. Thank you for tuning in to a nice roller skating edition of Miss Learner's Math Extravaganza. As always, we'll see you next time.